Okay, are you ready? One click. Instant snow in one click. Here's the click. There it is. Well, that was easy, wasn't it? I mean, yeah. Free snow add-on in Blender. How cool is that? And it comes, it comes with, it comes with Blender as standard. Uh, so let's dive into it. That was just uh, one single click, and there's not even that many settings. But there's a lot of things that you need to uh, like be aware of when using this, so that you don't um, screw up your scene and explode your computer, because the processing time can be really intense if you mess it up. Um, and there's ways around that. So it also generates this nice, uh, nice material look. I click on that. Yeah, generates all of this for free. Um, okay, so how does it work? Well, uh, first of all, the main things to think about is the scale. If I bring out the default, just to give you an idea, default Blender Cube is this big, right? And you want to keep it similar. So I've got some, another example here. I've got this building that I made earlier. This took, this roof here took uh, a couple of minutes, maybe. And so this was kind of instantaneous. And if you go much bigger than this, you're gonna run into problems. So the way around that would be, if you had, well, the first thing you have to think about is the scale. Let me just hide this so you can see what I'm actually generating it on. Let's hide that. So I was make, generating it on this roof here. And, uh, it came in from 3D Coat, and 3D Coat, when you import into Blender, for some reason, it's enormous. And um, the first time I tried this plugin, I just had a huge object, and I uh, applied it, and my computer had to be hard restarted because it just started to destroy all of my RAM. <laughs> so um, I then spoke to the developer, and he couldn't figure out what was wrong. He was saying, change these settings, and I was changing them. What I figured out was the actual physical size of the object that you're putting snow on uh, is a factor in how long it takes to generate. So, um, and you have to apply the scale. So it's no good just saying, "Well, I'll just take this and scale it down." You have to then apply the scale here. So let's just do like a, a comparison. Uh, so if I take this cube here and I scale it way down and uh, let's just give it a, like another pitch roof like so and then I so the scale is now like 0.4 of what it was object apply scale and then add snow it's like three or four seconds um, and then if I take this so what this is, is that roof, which took two minutes, duplicated and reduced down to 25% of what that was, and then applied that scale. Now it's a little bit more complex, it's a little bit bigger than those. Add snow. And as you can see, it's just slowly taking its time. Let's have a look at the RAM. It's not doing too bad, and if just uh, be careful, if this starts to get into the 95%, you will have to end task blender. And it's still thinking about it, and it's not a huge object, but you can get you know, the impression that um, if you did have a much bigger object, how long this is going to take if it you know completes at all. So there we go. And this is quite thick, this snow. This is, uh, so the height, let's talk about the height. The height is the size of the blobs. These are just, the snow is just basically made up of blobs. And the, the greater the height, the thicker the blobs. And you can get some thin snow if you go smaller. And I believe if you go smaller, it will also take up more time. So you can just take the snow and raise it up. And there you have it. Uh, and so yeah, that's just to illustrate the point that the bigger you go, the slower it's going to be. Uh, also, whenever it generates snow, it generates it in this collection. 
So if you happen to like hide your collection and then try and generate snow, it will throw back an error. I only just figured that out today. Um, and so yeah, it comes with uh, really complicated material. The developer uh, told me that um, to see, it's apparently got something called micro displacements. Um, in order to see those, you'd have to choose uh, cycles. Uh, I don't know quite how well this is going to work. And then choose uh, experimental. Uh, I've not had too much luck in seeing the actual really fine details come through, but uh, so for me, it's just been fine just to use it as it is. But you can see it's, it's quite slow in rendering, so I think it's doing something. And it has a displacement node here. Uh, so yeah, I can't quite see. It would probably take a good while to get a, a decent render on this. But there's some some specularity happening, some little uh, sparkly bits, which is nice. Uh, okay, so how do we install the add-on? Okay, let's get out of cycles because it's too slow. So to install the add-on, you just go to Edit, References, Add-ons, type in snow, and there it is, real snow, and you don't have to do anything else to it. Just add it, and it will appear over here. And like I say, you just find an object, and just click Add Snow. Uh, and just to show you the height, we go to 0.1, Add snow, it's quite small. We could probably go a bit smaller, Let's delete that. I don't think actually you can go to further decimal point, no, it only goes to 0.1. Uh, and if we go to say 0.7, it's going to look kind of silly. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay, so that's it for the real snow. I also wanted to talk about, uh, oh, by the way, just one more thing about the snow, uh, another little subtle point. When you create the snow, um, it will add, in the modifiers, it will add a subdivision modifier and it will add a decimate to just kind of bring the count down. Um, and I generated the snow on these steps and I wanted to sculpt it so that, because it was just like, see this step, it was, just, it was just perfectly even across but it was super slow. So what I did was I just applied those modifiers. So if you want to manipulate the snow, so let's just choose this as an example. Go into the sculpt mode, and I just got the uh, grab tool, and it's just super slow. I can't really control it in real time. So if I just go down here and apply subdivision, and then also I will take this down a bit further. So it's currently the decimate is down to, takes it down to 32,000. Let's just go down to, you don't really notice the difference. It's now 17,000, apply. And now I can sculpt much quicker. And I can just make it look a bit more realistic. Oh, it's got symmetry on somehow. Looks like a face. Um, That and then you really get much more of a realistic finish. Okay, so that's just about everything you need to know about the real snow add on. And so let's talk about uh, this snow material. Uh, so it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, we can adjust it like this for more coverage or for less coverage. And I'll just show you the node setup. Okay, so we've got whatever texture you have in the in your base color. You can just uh, use the node wrangler uh, to just uh, control T get that those, those inf information out. And so you take the uh, image texture and get the coordinate texture coordinate from that, and you take uh, the normal value into a separate x y z. Just uh, there. Drag that into the 
slot here and then it will be depending on so um, if you've got an object that's been rotated you'll need to probably apply the rotation otherwise just choose a different uh, yeah. so that comes on the side but the Z axis goes on the top um, and then you use a color ramp to fine-tune it and then the color is used in the mix shader so uh, you'd have two principal BDF, BSDFs one's the snow, one's your main texture so this is my roof texture um, if I hide that I just see that it's just like a wooden roof so that's just a snow that's it, the mix shader combines them, the factor is controlled by this colour ramp here and then we can just adjust how much snow we want pretty cool uh, and then what's cool is uh, anything else in your scene uh, let's just say this thing, let's hide that let's just say this was something else we wanted snow on we can just go to the original one and grab these this and whatever snow we want control C click on it control V I just give this a texture so that we can get the coordinates uh, I don't even know if we need to Control T. Just want to give that a better. There we go. Looks a bit better. And then we can just plug in the normal into there. And then put the diffuse into the first slot, snow into the second slot go to the surface and we don't get any snow. Oh we get some here. It's probably because of this. Yeah. If it was more if it was more of a complicated shape you'd see it go in and out of the of the sort of texture and all of the bumps and things. But it, because it's so flat it's like a quite binary it's either on or off. But yeah that gives you a rough idea. So uh, then it's just a simple case of just pasting that because you know when you've got a snow scene you'll usually have tons of objects that all need snow. So doing this copy and paste becomes like a like a common uh, workflow. And <clears throat> because this has the same texture, it's applied it to everything else. Yeah. So there we go. And just so that you can see, I want you to get a good sh shot of the uh, actual node setup. Here it is, pretty simple. Uh, texture, take the normal out, separate X, Y, Z, color ramp, mix shader, your main texture goes into the top, snow texture goes into the bottom, and out. Pretty simple. Okay, so I'm uh, glad I managed to get that out because I'm, it was really cool when I discovered uh, this plugin and um, I just wanted to tell everybody about it because I couldn't believe I was looking for some snow and I thought, you know, is there a plugin out there that you have to pay for or something like that? Um, and uh, and I found I found this. And not only was it free, but it was inside Blender already, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, I hope you uh, enjoyed it and hope you got something out of this. And uh, uh, if you liked the video, give it a like and maybe consider subscribing if you haven't. And uh, cool, I shall see you again.